So some of the unicorn plants have become a lot more available these days for much better prices. One of these being the Monstera Oblica Peru. I've now had this plant for over a year in my care. Shall we have a look at what I think a year after owning this plant? Hi! My name is Memo, this is my channel Has Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today is going to be hopefully what might be a dynamic return to the plant review series after a bit of a break over the summer period. And the plant I'm going to be talking about today, the title will probably have it, is the Monstera Oblica Peru. Now, in order to be fully transparent, we're not quite at the one year mark now. I think we're about a month off at the one year mark, but it's pretty much been a year in my care at the moment. At least my first Monstera Oblica Peru, the one that I got from Equigenera, I think on my first unboxing. I will link the video at the top. And you might also be able to notice, and I'm doing a bit of a side note here, new t-shirt which means finally after all of this time when everybody's been requesting I now have merch! Yay! So I cannot tell you how exciting this is basically. So I did the designs myself so they might be a bit rough and ready for right now but if there's an interest in kind of a bit more merch from my channel do let me know and I'll see about making some new designs. But there are three designs one of which you can kind of see it should all be down below. I think I've linked everything correctly. Bear with me if not. I was checking today before filming and for some reason it was showing all the products from the back side which doesn't really have anything on the back side. You can see at the back there and not from the front where the design is. So hopefully by the time this video comes out that would have been resolved because I'll talk to support and see if they can start showing properly. If you do click the links though it will take you to where you can see the product properly. But there are three designs and I will show you all three of them. They're not just t-shirts, I was looking at hoodies, there's some tote bags, there's some mugs as well, there's some stickers. But I decided to go with the sayings that everybody find quite funny on my channel. So one is the one that you can see here and it is, my leaves are turgid, are yours. I thought a bit cheeky basically. Most of these designs are going to be relatively funny, or at least I think they're funny. <laughs> Hopefully you think the same. Let me show you the other two and then we can get into the review. Right, so this is the other design. Obviously there's loads of colours for everybody to choose from. As far as I'm aware I've made it available to the EU, the States and the UK. It might even be global, I'm not entirely sure, but do check it out down below. So this is the other one. I hopefully you like the design. And this is your Meliga... Oh, words. Your mealy bugs can play with my mealy bugs. <laughs> People that have been here for a while know A when I said that and B that it pretty much holds true basically. <laughs> I've got enough mealy bugs in here on a regular basis that if I do get a plant that has got mealy bugs I'm just like, you know what, they can play together, it's fine. And you know it wouldn't be my channel, I did leave the best for last janky support sticks for the win. So essentially everyone needs a janky support stick sometimes. Which is true. It's all about like what I've been talking about on my channel. You don't always need a muffs pole. Sometimes a janky support stick is fine. And I thought I'd kind of tie it in a bit with the mental health side of things. So yeah, they are available. They should be down below. Check them out if you want. If not, no problem. Let's dive into the review. Okay, this is my plant and by the look of it you might be able to see where this review is going to head. So this is <laughs> the runner. So this plant is a plant that I got as I mentioned from I think my first Equigenera order and it was because I found it and it was a lot cheaper then than what it ever had been. <laughs> the people that will know will know basically. And I think it's still come down even further. I do have a second one and let me pick it up and show it to you as well. That one is not a year old though. 
This is my second Monstera Oblica Peru. And this one you might be able to see is in soil. We'll touch on that in just a moment when we look at substrates. Now, the thing with the original one that I got was that it was quite healthy. I will see if I can put a picture here for my plant care app of when I first got the actual plant itself. And you might be able to see that there was quite a few leaves. It's lost some of those leaves. It did get a moss pole from me, first time ever, but it is in semi-hydro. Now, the background on this, most people that are at least into some form of kind of rare or kind of unavailable, not easily available tropical house plants will know that the Monstera Oblica Peru has been a plant that has been under discussion and under debate for a very long period of time. There was a lot of retailers that were actually selling Monstera adansonii and mislabeling it as Monstera Oblica. I can't do a video about an Oblica plant without mentioning Kaylee Ellen because I think she brought it to a lot more people's attentions basically and I think she had a very famous saying, it's never an Oblica. <laughs> You wouldn't, back then, you wouldn't be getting an oblique for the prices that these people in these shops were selling an Adansonii for. Absolutely no chance. Even now when the prices have come down, you still can't necessarily get it for those prices. So I've also just noticed, you might be seeing my eyes going uh, that away. I was able to find a couple of ladybugs, ladybirds, ladybugs, I think. Um, and I was able to kind of bring them into the space and I didn't think they were going to do very much on the hope that they would eat some of the often mentioned mealybugs. So it's still around and it's kind of going around places. Great. Munch away, my lovely. But yes, sorry. <laughs> Side notes. So it is one of those things that never really was available readily. And to be fair, I don't think... Well, maybe I have. Maybe recently I did see a Monstera Oblica Peru in a garden centre. Granted, the price was still higher, but I'll touch on price and availability. But yeah, they are a lot more, not readily, but they're a lot more available these days, at least in my neck of the woods. But yeah, and it is one of those things that when I did see it on the Equigenera website way back when, I'm just like, great, let's grab and let's see what the fuss is all about. And it was, the reality for me was that. It was, let's see what the fuss is all about. I like the plant. I was never excited about the plant. I get it and I get the hype. And I think if the leaves get a bit larger and there's more holes, beautiful. And I get it. But yeah, I thought, let's see, because I'm just like, let's, let's finally get this plant that everybody has been talking about. And if I am not mistaken, was very, very expensive. But again, I'll touch on that on availability. But yeah, I think that's what I wanted to say about background. Let's move into the next topic. So, <laughs> speed of growth. I'm not going to sugarcoat this. Slow. So <laughs> this grows very fast. So the runner will grow very, very fast. And that is... The main difference that you can tell, even if you can't tell from the leaf itself, the difference between an Adansonii and an Oblica, this will be your first telltale sign, hands down. So a Monstera Adansonii will climb quite regularly, give it any kind of structure. I've even got it climbing on a janky support stick, not just on a moss pole, but with this, it will always bring out runners basically one way or another. So on top of that, it is slow. It is slow growing. And I can talk about this from both perspectives because some of you might be sitting there going, oh, but this is in semi-hydro and it's in your kind of semi-hydro mix. So the core semi-hydro mix from Soil Ninja, but this is also being tested in soil. And you can see if anything, this has brought out more runners. <laughs> But one thing I will say, and it's a shame I don't think I took a picture. If I did, and I do have it on my plant care app, I will add it here. But 
There was, I think, five, five or six leaves when this first arrived. You can see here one remaining leaf from a spurt of growth that it had at some point and brought out some new leaves to the side. And I was just like, great, I'm definitely going to give it a moss pole so it can climb on. But it didn't do very much to stop the actual runners. And I don't know if I can say anything more about this. It's slow, basically. I will say that I did not grow this in a terrarium. I'm growing it in my conservatory. However, the way that I look at my conservatory, a lot of the times it is pretty much a glorified terrarium. I granted I am not getting those 100% humidity rates, but a lot of the times I'm looking at my humidity meter at the moment. I'm at six. 60, 76% humidity now, and it can go up to 80 a lot of times, even 90. I know from reading a few kind of online sources, people just like, no, no, this really does need a terrarium. It needs those 90 and up percent of humidity levels. I've said this and I will stick by my guns. If it cannot survive, even in the conservatory, I'm not gonna give it a terrarium. So we'll touch on accessories in just a moment, but yeah, it's it's slow. So bear that in mind if you're thinking about getting this plant. <laughs> Coming into ease of propagation. And again, I can only go through my experiences. And this entire video, these are my experiences. If yours differ, and I know a lot of people did rush to get these plants when they first came out, or even got them since then as well, in the lower prices I'm talking about now. If anybody's watching this that has had this plant for a few years and they paid the big, big prices and they wanna share some of their experiences, please do so down below. We would all like to know from people that have had this for a bit longer. But yeah, the propagation method that you would probably use for this, especially considering that it has got a propensity to run and not easily bring out leaves. So normally I would say the easiest way that you can propagate most Monsteras, philodendrons, aroids is to get a node cutting which should have at least a leaf, maybe a bit of an aerial root, and then root it from there. I've not attempted that now. I should probably do it for this section here because there is actually a leaf here and there is a node there, which might very well happen after this video. I did what everybody else has been doing for a very long period of time now where I took node cuttings. And for the eagle-eyed amongst you, you might be able to see that that bit is cut there. That was a node that was cut. There's another node that was cut there. And as well, for the people that have been here for a while, this was one of the plants that I used for the experiment that I did with the keiki paste. And I added in some keiki paste near the actual nodes. And I will show you, hopefully this might come up on camera. So I don't know whether or not that will actually show up there, but you might be able to see a bit of a growth point. And that's why I decided to cut the node. And I think I cut the node also at another section where I had cakey paste, thinking that would activate the node. No, no, no. A previous node activated to create more runners. <laughs> This is a year on, I will remind of this. Now, the really interesting thing, and I did, <laughs> anybody that has seen my plant roast video probably saw this review coming. I will link it at the top. But <laughs> I tried propagating the nodes in a prop box. Did it go a bit dry? Probably, but did it go too, too dry? No, it was still had that high, high level of humidity and not to kind of like humble brag or anything like that, but most of the times when I do propagations in a prop box, especially something like a wet stick propagation, I can at least, knowing what I know now and how I've been doing it over the years, can guarantee about eight out of 10 nodes to activate and start growing new leaves, start growing new roots. At worst, I think I've only ever had a four out of 10 success rate zero out of 10 success rate. Every single node did not activate and rotted out. <laughs> so, and I tried it twice and I think both times exactly the same thing happened basically. So <laughs> my experiences, again, yours might differ. If yours differ, 
truthfully, I would love to know. So do let me know down in the comments below, and I'm sure other people would as well, because I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that has got <laughs> the running problem with this plant. The thing is, and this is the thing, because not enough people have this growing for a long period of time yet. It's meant to be a climbing plant, and it could still be a climbing plant, but I don't know, and I tried. You might be able to see here, that I put the node down onto the growing media level just to see, I'm just like, does it need to crawl a little bit? Kind of thinking, you know what, it needs to go towards a tree, maybe it needs to crawl first, then it won't run as much, and then when it finds something to climb, it will start bringing out new leaves. Now, the interesting thing is, it didn't bring out the leaves, I don't think, from the moment that I attached it here. It, only, it had already brought out a leaf, and then I attached it, and then it just continued bringing out leaves, of which there was at least three new leaves, it has dropped most of them, basically. So there is that. So coming into availability, and this is gonna be the big topic that has been discussed a lot, so I'll put the plant down and we can kind of chat, basically. This plant has gone through a transformation when it comes to both availability and price. Because there was a point, and again I'll mention, I, as I said, I can't not mention Kaylee, at least in our sphere of the world and here in the UK, she had one of the first, if I'm not mistaken, Monsero Oblique Perus in the UK, possibly Europe, one of the first, not the first in Europe I think, but one of the first basically. And she chopped it and propagated it. I think she was selling node cuttings at some point and possibly like actual plantlets from her original plant. She'd put it in a bio or terrarium. She had her own issues with that basically. But back then this plant was a definitely a very difficult plant to A, find and B, if you found it, it was ridiculously expensive. I think each of the nodes, the cuttings, unrooted by the way, were going for mid to high triple digits at some point, if I was mistaken. Also, having spoken to McMitty a few months back, and I did not know this, he obviously would know this a bit more than I would, there was a point where an established plant, not massively so, but a plant nonetheless, it wasn't node cuttings or anything like this, at its height, and I think this was during lockdowns and the pandemic, had gone up to close to thirty or forty thousand dollars, especially considering the prices that these plants were sold for. I can't remember exactly how much I paid for this one. If I do remember to check, it's on the original unboxing video, but I will see if I can add it on there. It wasn't an awful lot. It wasn't anywhere near that kind of level of money. And since then it has come down again. So if I do find the price that I paid for the Equigenera one a year ago, I will add it. And if I find the price that I paid for the Grow Tropicals one, the second one, which has come down even since I paid for this, I will add that as well. But yeah, it's come down drastically. And it's because I think A, there was enough that went into the market and then some of the bigger growers just started growing this in mass and then flood the market, which meant the prices came down. And it will continue to come down, I think. And we might end up seeing this become a lot more available. The reality is, and at least this is my feeling on this, will this ever surpass the Adansonii? Will it ever become as popular as the Adansonii and surpass the Adansonii? as in it will come down to Adansonii prices and you will find it as regularly as you find Adansonii in shops and will it replace the Adansonii? Truthfully, I don't think so. Because the Adansonii, you kind of let it go and it will do its thing and it will grow quite happily, quite nicely. And I think for the average newbie into the world of houseplants, that is perfect. That's exactly what they need. They need a plant that will give them that instant sign that yes, I'm doing well and I'm growing happily. Can you imagine if you were first starting off with a house plant and you got one of these and it did this? Like, what would you think? What would you do, basically? You would probably be a bit unimpressed. And you'd also think that you were doing something wrong when this is just how the plant wants to grow. So there is that. And yeah, I think that's the reality with this is the prices have come down. Do I think they kind of come down further? Yes. Will it become a lot more available for a lot more people? Yes, which I don't think is a bad thing for this plant because I know this was a bucket list plant for a lot of people. So I'm sure even after this review and after my video, 
this will still keep flying off the shelves. It makes sense because so many people wanted it for such a long time or didn't even think they could have it. God knows that I did not think I was going to own two Monster Oblique Perus. Come on. Like th the memo from even a year ago would have never believed that this would have been the case because I'm just like, I'm not paying that kind of money. No offense to the people that do pay those kind of money, but as I said on previous videos, A, I do not have the level of disposable income for £40,000 for a plant. And also, I want to sleep at night because I've said this and I will say this again. It doesn't matter how long you've been dealing with houseplants or how much of an expert you think you are. Plants die. Things happen to plants. Can you imagine if you paid £40,000 for or £40,000 for a plant and then woke up one morning and it's infested with thrips? <laughs> you die a little bit inside, I think. So yes, I want to be able to sleep. So these prices, great, fine. Definitely worth at least an attempt to grow it, basically. So let's move into pest, actually. That kind of nicely took me into the pest region. I will say with this one, and I'm kind of looking at it now, it hasn't had... Any real pests, I will say. No mealybugs. I don't think I had thrips on this. And I don't think I have ever had nothing, basically. Like, no thrips, no spider mites, I don't think, either. It has been fine. So whether or not it means it's relatively resistant to bugs, I don't know. Also, I have got it growing in the, in the conservatory, which some people might say, well, oh, yeah, you might not get as many pests. I'm just like, if you've been here long enough, you know that I get pests as well as everybody else does. So I hesitate to say this, but it doesn't seem to be too attractive to pests. Whether or not that's the case, I don't know. But just on the year that I've had this, possibly, basically, possibly. I mean, the leaves, I'm kind of touching the leaves now. Are they thicker? They are. They're thicker than the Monstera Adinsonii, then are they as thick? I'm looking at the Esqueleto. No, the Esqueleto is even thicker, basically. But yeah, I mean, yeah, no, no bugs. I don't, I don't know how, uh, how otherwise to say that, really. So coming into <laughs> accessories and care on this, and I'm not an expert because as I said, it's been a year, but I'm still trying to figure it out. I will show something that I saw the other day and I got way too excited. There is a new leaf that is coming up there and hopefully if I take my face away you might be able to see it. There is a whole bunch of runners again and I'm going to have to chop these runners and try propagating them because I just don't want runners anymore basically. But, and I'll bring both of them up. The only reason why this is looking a lot healthier and a lot more leaves is because this is a lot more recent of approaches basically. Um, but that's the reason, predominantly, I'm not going to lie, that's the reason why I got this plant, is I wanted to try it in soil to see if the soil makes a difference. I'm going to be honest, and I'll see if I can bring it up so you might be able to see. If I bring it up and you can hopefully see the roots through the semi-hydro growing media, it's growing okay. There is no root rot on this plant. So... It's a tricky one to kind of deal with. How am I watering these plants? I'm watering them as most other Monsteras, so I will let whatever growing media it is go almost entirely dry. With my big kind of Monstera deliciosas, I will generally let it go fully dry and then water it. With this and with some of my smaller root Monsteras, I won't ever let it go bone dry, bone, bone, bone dry, especially for a few days and then water it. So it's, it's kind of on that cusp. It has got the same fertilization process that I do with most of my other plants, so weekly, weekly, or weekly whenever it's watered. And it's been okay. As I said, I've tried putting on a moss pole, and I'm trying to see if it ever rooted into the moss pole. I truthfully don't think it did. This isn't a plant that I found that the aerial roots will grow substantially, if that makes sense. Like, if you think about some other, like, think of the Monstera Deliciosa specifically, 
think about its aerial routes. They are substantial, basically. And even some of the others, I'm trying to think now, I'm looking at the Siltipicana that I've got back there. That's also got some substantial roots. These aerial roots are itty bitty, tiny, 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 tiny. So you might be able to see there. And they don't tend to want to grow past that point. So, which I think is part of the issue that I'm having when I'm trying to propagate this plant. So, or at least the, the node cuttings. So do I think you need a moss pole? Probably not, and I mean, you're looking at this now and it's bone dry, mainly because I gave up on the moss pole. Even when I was keeping it evenly moist and all of these things and doing all the right things, it did zero. So that's the other thing as well. And the thing that I always worry with moss poles, if you try to keep them wet all the time, by default, if you've got something like semi-hydro, it means you are keeping your semi-hydro sapping wet for most of the time as well. So, I've got things to say about moss poles and I probably will do an entirely separate video about that, but I will leave that for now. But yeah, so a janky support stick is probably gonna be fine. Do I have any kind of idea of which one of the two growing medias is better? Gut feel, I would say this definitely needs soil. Have I got any proof of that yet? No, because if you can see this, it's still running. <laughs> I even tried sphagnum moss at the top there to see if it would root into the sphagnum mot, mot, moss, and I'm looking at it now, no. <laughs> so it is one of those things, it's still, and I mean, I don't want to keep sounding, I'm probably sounding completely like I'm poo-pooing on this plant through this video, but there are certain things, it's still a monstera, it's still doing okay, even when it's struggling a bit that you can see some of the yellowing on the leaves it's still a Monstera, it's still doing okay. So there is that to be said about it. But I know from a few other people when I was talking to that have had it for a bit longer, they've all kind of said the same thing. It is a relatively slow plant. So I would say it's more important for this plant, I should have mentioned this in availability, it's more important on this plant, if you can, you can't always, I don't think I've ever seen it happen yet. If you can, some retailers will say, pick your plants, so plant A, B, C, D, and you've got the pictures. Choose one that you like the look of, because the reality is for the next six months to a year, that's realistically what you're gonna be looking at most of the time. That and <laughs> runners. <laughs> so make sure that you like the look of that specific plant. As I said, you might not be able to get, a... as I said, I don't think I've seen retailers do it for this specific plant. I've seen it for other plants. But if you do find that, that might make the process a bit nicer and a bit more enjoyable for you, but yeah. <laughs> so let's come into final thoughts about this plant. <laughs> Can you guess where I'm gonna go with this one? So let's, let's start the scoring as I usually do. So knowing what I know now, if I didn't, own this plant and I knew what I knew, know now, would I still purchase this plant? This is a tricky one. Gut feel? No. Massively underwhelmed. Flip side of that is knowing what I know now, even knowing what I know now and based on the fact that I wanted it for as long as I did and never thought I'd be able to afford it, would I still get it on that basis alone? Probably. I mean, I'd already, I was already disheartened with this one. <laughs> and then I got the second one as well. <laughs> and I mean, they're, they're cheaper now, they're still not that cheap, basically. But <laughs> the second one from Grow Tropicals was a good deal, basically. But yeah, it is one of those things. And this is why I'm, I don't feel bad maybe giving this a bit of a negative review because I know that regardless of whatever I say on this video, I don't think I don't have that big of an ego, basically. I don't think that any of my videos really, but I don't think that what I say on this will basically mean that the Monstera Oblique Peru's like sales will plummet. People still want this plant. And it is that, it's that reason that we never, most of us never thought we'd be able to own this plant. And all of a sudden it's just like, ooh, at that price, maybe. So there is that. Now coming into the score out of this plant, so zero, one being the worst, 10 being the best, 
where would I score this plant? Truthfully, truthfully, a two or a three. And I'm putting it, I'm, I wouldn't give it a one or a zero. I've had other plants that <laughs> are oh, looping them. But yeah, I, I can't give it more. And I'm giving it the three because I still love, love the look of this. Like for me, and maybe this is why not all plants should end up being house plants at one point or another, basically. If this was a plant that could size up relatively easily and not be super, super slow and didn't have runners. And I mean, if it didn't have runners and it was still a bit slow, but you still got the occasional leaf instead of just runners, I would probably score this a lot higher. So you might say that my biggest issue is the runners basically, but at the same time, do I think it's worth the price that you're paying now? Mm, kind of. Would I truthfully have been very raw if I had that kind of money and spent $40,000 at its highest I'm talking about now for this plant? A hundred percent. Because it's not as if I could have even said that, you know what, it's fine if it's got runners because all I'm going to do is if every single runner will root out quite easily, I can just cut all the runners, put them in a propagation box, get more little plantlets, put it back onto the same pot, get it bigger, or at the stupid prices that they were at some point, cut those, root them out, or even not root them out, but sell them on, make a bit of a profit, and not feel guilty that potentially I've kind of wasted somebody's money. And I know everybody knows the risks when you're just buying node cuttings, like a wet stick, basically. But I think for me, this is an interesting one. And I would love to know if there's any of you out there that did buy wet sticks of these back when, how did they do for you? Did they root out? Did you have a lot of stress whilst trying to grow them out? Because as I said, they were quite expensive back in the day, basically, when they first came out. So yeah. <laughs> Not the most positive of reviews, but um, as this, I do think this video is probably going to get a few people commenting down below. I might even get some hate for this and that's fine. And as I've said with all of these reviews, these are my opinions and I will be honest about this plant. <laughs> but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.